Hi, Penny here and as usual I'm here to talk about some bookish things specifically today we're going to build my TBR for the month of October. Now as usual we are going to use my TBR machine reading prompt website to pick the books with the aim of picking out 3,000 pages to read but first I am going to have to take out the library books that I have out this month so far as well as the books that I've borrowed from my brother and sister so I'll go through these in more detail once we've picked out the rest of the books but just those comes to 2173 pages so we're probably just going to be picking a few books using the TBR machine so let us figure out what our first prompt is going to be read your most recent book purchase this is difficult because my most recent book purchase is actually on my September TBR, but I haven't quite read it yet. I'm planning to read it by the end of the month, but I'm going to be annoyed if I actually don't and then it would be in here. And I'm trying to remember what was the book I bought before that. Hmm. I need to look at my list. I honestly don't even know. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that other than the book that's on my September TBR, the last time I actually bought books was at the book fair that I went to a couple of months ago. Uh, and one of the books that I did get from that is Tales of Suspense by Edgar Allan Poe. I mostly bought it for the look of the book just because it looks like the kind of book that you would have on your cool shelves. Also though, this will be quite useful for October because I do know there are a lot of spooky readathons during October. I haven't really made a plan for which ones I might want to do but I'm pretty sure that this book of different short stories by Edgar Allan Poe is one that will help me to complete a lot of those readathons. So this is 271 pages which puts us up to 2,444 pages. We've got about 500 pages left to pick. Probably a couple of books. So the next prompt will be read a self-published book. I'm not sure how many of those I have left on my physical TBR. Oh this I want to read this one. So this is Where the Child by Philip Valentine. So this is a book all about I guess like fairy parasite type things. So it's set in New Zealand and in New Zealand there are these creatures that basically become like a symbiote or like a friendly parasite within different humans and it also gives those humans different powers. It's set during the time of the war and I think that uh, these are they called seraphim? So it's like an angel term, right? So I have actually read this before and I really loved it, but uh, I read it in ebook form and I haven't read the physical form since I got it. But I know that Philippa Ballantyne tried to find an official publisher for this, but they all said nobody would want to read a story about New Zealanders getting special powers and so she couldn't find anyone and eventually decided to self-publish it. So that's cool. I managed to fit it onto my TBR. I think it is kind of spooky too. I might be able to fit it into some spooky reader thumbs. So this is 323 pages long, which means I'm up to 2,776 pages. One more prompt maybe? So the next prompt is read a book written by a female author. Now I'm pretty sure that most of the books on my TBR are female authors. So this will give me a bit too much choice really. Uh, I usually like it when there's not many books to choose from because it makes my decision much easier but let us see if we can pick one. Okay I found one that I'm excited to read and that is The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab. So this is a bind up of her archived and unbound books. I don't know much about it other than I think there's like a library and the books within this library are like dead people's souls and sometimes they try to escape. What I do know is very recently it was announced that this is going to be made into a movie and I'm sure that that will take forever and ever. So I don't really need to hurry up and read this book but still I definitely want to read it before the movie comes out so why not read it now. Also since all it's all about ghosts and souls escaping I assume I could fit it in again to some of those spooky readathons. So this is 692 pages since it is 
technically two books, but we're just going to count it as one. And that puts me up to 3,459 pages. So that means with just having picked three books using the TBR machine, my TBR is full. But this video isn't over because I do still want to take you through my library books and my borrowed books and also the audio books that I'm hoping to read in October. Firstly, for library books, I could not withstand the hype any longer and I finally got Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I really want to finish this series before Piera Ford comes out with her Nevernight web series that she's doing. So I need to get onto this. Also, I just, I really love the covers, so I'd love an excuse to buy them. Everybody says it's really great. It's about this girl named Mia who decides to get revenge for her parents' death and trains to become an assassin. That sounds like the kind of thing I would like. Jay Kristoff seems like a really cool guy, so I'm really hoping that I will love this series as much as so many other people are. Then I also have Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. So this is a story about Cassidy Blake who is able to see ghosts, her best friend is a ghost, and her parents are also ghost hunters, although they don't realize that she can actually see ghosts, whereas they're just doing a kind of investigative TV show. This is the second book in the series, so I am excited to continue it. It's just a middle grade series, so it's quite fun although I like that it's got that darker edge to it. I know that when I was a middle grade type child, these darker books were definitely my preference. And hey, it also means that I'll be reading two Schwab books this month. So that's exciting because I really love Victoria Schwab as a person and as an author. Then I don't know how I feel about the next book that I got from the library. That is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. So this is the sequel to The Poppy War which is a story that was all based around this girl named Rin, who starts out as an orphan in poverty, but she studies and manages to get herself into this military academy where she starts learning magic, and then war breaks out, everything kind of turns to shit. This book, the war will be continuing, I assume. I personally didn't really like the bits of the book once the war started. I preferred the, the magic in the school setting. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this book, but I wanted to give the series a bit more of a chance because there were parts of the Poppy War that I really loved. I am somewhat regretting giving this book that chance because it's massive, and so hopefully it won't drag too much when I actually get to reading it. I do remember that the Poppy War was also quite long, and I think it was quite easy to read though, so hopefully this won't be too bad. Either way, I've got it from the library, so I'm going to at least give it a go. And then, lastly from the library, I have this little manga graphic novel thing called The Girl from the Other Side. Just this cute little girl who's being raised by this big scary monster thing. I don't know much about the actual story, but I am excited to start this series just because it's so dark and creepy. And hey, this will be another one that's good for all those spooky readathons. I've actually done, like, I didn't plan for any of these spooky readathons, but I actually think my TBR is working out quite well for it. Then we also have the books that I've borrowed from my brother and sister. So firstly, the one that I've borrowed from my sister is Peeps. I had this on my TBR a couple of months ago, and then I never got to it, and then I've just kind of had it floating around. But I really do need to read it, because my sister has been making progress on the book that I've lent her, and if she returns that, I'm going to feel like I need to have returned this. So I better read it. What my sister has told me about this book is that it's got weird vampires in it. I haven't read any vampire books for a little while now, so I'm interested to get to this one since my sister recommends it. Then from my brother, I do have the last four volumes of Death Note, which I would really like to get through and see how I feel about this series as a whole once I've read all the books. I've been reading this series over the last few months and there are some that I really love and others that I'm less excited about, so I'm not sure how I'm going to feel when I've read the whole series. Definitely, regardless of what happens from here, I still loved some of what's happened so far. But the last one went in a funny direction, so I'm not sure. But last time the series went in a funny direction, it redeemed itself. So I'm kind of expecting that to happen again. And also, my brother has been bugging me about finishing this series. I want to watch the anime as well, so I just need to get to it. I probably won't actually take that long because it's manga and manga is fast to read. 
But since I've actually made space for this on my TBR this month, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get through these. So that means these are all the physical books that I will have to read in October. It's a big pile, but to be honest, I don't think it's as bad as last month. So it's nice that I'm being a bit kinder to myself. I was actually thinking of cutting my target down to 2,000 pages, but then I had 2,000 pages of library books and I still want to play with my TBR machine, so I couldn't do it. But I might make that change at some point in the future. We'll see how we go with our reading in October. So the other books that I want to go through with you are the audiobooks that I have. So most of these I already have out on Libby or I have a hold on them. So firstly we have Oversea Under Stone by Susan Cooper. So I believe this series is one that Gemma from A Story and a Song recommended to me. I don't really know anything about it other than that she said it was good. Assuming that it's the one that she told me to read, uh, I may have gotten confused. But... It's a fantasy story and I'll discover what else it's about when I read it. And I also have Kabu Kabu which is a short story collection by Nnedi Okorafor. So Nnedi Okorafor is the author who wrote Binti and I also actually have this book physically on my TBR shelf but I recently discovered there's an audiobook so I'm going to try and consume it that way instead. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of short story collections but I did enjoy the Binti series and I'm also really interested to read some more by Nnedi Okorafor so I'm going to pick up this audiobook. Then I also have The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. So this is the second book, the sequel to Truly Devious. I read Truly Devious earlier this month and the cliffhanger ending meant I had to get this second book straight away, although I'm quite worried because I know The Vanishing Stair also has a cliffhanger ending and the third book isn't out until next year. So I'm pretty sure that when I finish this audiobook I'm going to be annoyed, but I can't wait. I need to find out what's going to happen next. Basically this is a story about this school for gifted individuals and like 50 years ago there was a murder and now there's a girl there trying to figure out this murder and some more murders have started happening so she's getting involved in that investigation as well. Then I also have the audiobook for Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean A. Maguire. It's the second book in the Wayward Children series. I've read the series before but I've decided to do a reread just to refresh my memory about the series and all the different characters before the new book comes out at the start of next year. This is a very well-known series but if you haven't heard about it. It follows the students at this boarding school which is designed for students who have previously found a door through to a magical world and then for whatever reason return to the normal world and now they're having difficulty adjusting to that normal world. I do think Down Among the Sticks and Bones was my favorite on the first read so hopefully that will still be true as I reread the series. Then I do also have the audiobook for Don't Sweat the Small Stuff by Dr. Michael Mansell. So this is just a non-fiction book about not sweating the small stuff. Uh, it came up in another book I was reading as something worth reading and I thought why not? It's a short audiobook. I'll see whether I can get any useful advice out of it. And then continuing on with non-fiction I also have Quiet by Susan Cain. So I actually thought I had this out like a couple of months ago. It's a book all about introversion and how to see your introversion as a strength rather than a weakness. Uh, the one that I read a couple of months ago was actually one like rewritten for teenagers. So I'm excited to read the adult version and I am planning once I've read this to do a video all about the different introvert books that I've read over the last few months. So once I've read that I'll finally be able to make that video which I've been planning forever. <laughs> oh then I do also have Aurora Rising by J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is a YA sci-fi about this misfit band of space cadets and the trouble they get into. I'm actually hoping to get to this in September. If my Libby hold comes through in time I'll be reading it for Tome Infinity. But I'm not sure if it's going to come through in time because I'm cutting it very close. Uh, so if I don't get to it in September I'll definitely be reading it in October. Oh wow and then the Victoria Schwab continues because I also have the audiobook 
for The Near Witch on hold. So this is Victoria Schwab's debut novel. Uh, it was recently re-released after going out of print previously. Now since it is her debut novel it has been said that it's not as good as some of her later stuff but I'm still really excited to read it and just like tick off all of the Victoria Schwab books. Then lastly I also have the audiobook for The Humans by Matt Haig on hold. Uh, this I don't know much about it. Something about aliens coming and giving this guy the option to destroy all of humanity and he has to decide whether he wants to do that or not. I don't really know but Rachel Marie from Rachel Marie's Book Journey was talking about it recently and she made it sound really good so I thought why not pick up the audiobook? These days I try to pick up most uh, booktuber recommendations in audiobook because I have enough physical books to get through between the books that I'm really excited about getting from the library and my existing TBR shelves. So audiobooks saving the day. But those are all the audiobooks so that's nine audiobooks. None of them are too long though so I think that should be entirely achievable because I do read quite a lot of audiobooks while I'm out and about and walking around. So those are all the books that I'm planning to read in October. It might change a little, I might add some more in but that's the minimum or at least the minimum goal. I'm not doing very well with reading my September TBR books so I guess I shouldn't go into October with too much optimism but I'm looking at this pile I, I think it's achievable. Anyway do let me know if you have read any of the books that I'm planning to read in October. Do you think they're any good? Am I going to enjoy them? Once I've read them I'd love to chat with you more about them when we get to my October wrap up. Otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having a wonderful day and that your October reading plans all come together and I will see you next time.